Hi, my name is Mara Linsky Deegan, and I'm the Associate Curator and Registrar here at the Charles H. McNider Art Museum in Mason City, Iowa. And today I'm going to be talking about um, the potter, Marguerite Lillinghain, and um, I'm talking about the piece that we have right here, which is Horses and Children. Um, Marguerite Willinghain was born Marguerite Freelander in, um, fr in Lyon, France in 1896 um, and she actually grew up in both Germany and England. Her, her father was German and um, uh, when she was a young child she, she enjoyed art and decided in 1914 to go to the Berlin College of Arts and she really enjoyed it there. And then in 1919, she actually joined the Bauhaus um, group there and uh, was one of the first people who had a, um, uh, a fellowship at the Bauhaus um, uh, school in Germany. And she actually did a fellowship, an internship there for uh, six years. Um, and uh, in about 1920, uh, Marguerite met Franz Wildinghain, uh, a German man who uh, obviously was living in Germany, and uh, the two fell in love and got married. And um, then in the 1930s, um, when um, Hitler was coming to power in Germany, um, Marguerite decided it was a good time to leave Germany because she had Jewish ancestry. And people with Jewish ancestry at the time um, were not having a lot of rights in Germany. And so she wanted to make sure that she was still free to do the things she loved, like pottery. So she and her husband moved to Holland. And then in 1940, when things in Holland were also not looking the greatest because of World War II, um, she, because she was a French citizen, was able to apply for um, immigration status to the United States, and it was granted. Unfortunately, her husband, who was a German citizen, was not granted um, uh, you know, a, a visa to come to the United States. He actually had to stay in Holland. Um, and so when she came to the U.S., she moved to California, and then in 1945, when she became a U.S. citizen, she was able to sponsor her husband to come over from Holland and join her in the United States. So when uh, Marguerite came to the United States in, the in early 1940, um, she, like I said, moved to California, and uh, while she was there, she had several different jobs and worked several places, but then in 1942, um, something really big changed her life. Uh, she met Gordon and Jane Herr, and they were um, two folks that were trying to start an art colony in California. And the place they were starting it was called Pond Farm. And it was called Pond Farm because it was a farm and it had a really neat pond, so they decided to call it right after what it was. Um, and an art colony is a place where a bunch of artists live right on site and they make all kinds of art all together so they learn from one another. And um, Marguerite thought this was a great thing. So in 1942 she was one of the first people to move to Pond Farm and um, live and work there. And it was an artist colony. Once her husband joined her, um, they lived there together. And it was an artist colony until the early 1950s. And Jane Herr was the one who kind of ran the business. She kind of kept everything going. And unfortunately, she died um, rather young in the early 1950s. And when she passed away, her husband kind of lost interest in the art colony. And so a lot of the other artists um, decided to move away and do their own thing. But Marguerite stayed there. She actually lived, like I said, right in the area and then um, was able to um, build her own uh, studio where she could work and kind of make things the way she wanted to. She also had a place that she could fire her pottery. Um, and so at, from that time in the mid-1950s onward, they actually renamed the area the Pond Farm Pottery. And she would, during the year, like during the school year, from about September to, you know, maybe June, she would do her own thing. She would speak and she would, um, at different places around, even the McNider Art Museum. She came here in the late 1960s, but she would go around and talk at different museums and, and make her own pottery and even write, um, help write some articles and do interviews, all kinds of stuff. But in the summer, she would put on big workshops for all kinds of potters. 
And so people would come from all over to California to the Pond Farm Pottery and they would take workshops from her and learn everything she knew about pottery. And um, several of the people in our collection, actually when they were students, they went and studied with Marguerite. And two of them um, are on display right over here. And I'll even point them out. So if you want to follow me right over. All right, so number 27 there is by an artist named Dan Sorensen. And he's an Iowa artist who got to go and do some workshops with Marguerite. And number 29 is by um, uh, Dean Schwartz. And he really worked uh, with Marguerite a lot and actually even wrote a whole book about her, which is pretty cool. So unfortunately, Marguerite passed away in 1985, but there was something kind of cool that came out of um, her living and working at the Pond Farm Pottery. And that is that in um, uh, 1985, when she passed away, uh, California, where Pond Farm uh, Pottery is, decided to make the area where she lived and worked into a state park. Um, and it's one of the places that you can visit. Um, and actually, even cooler is that in 2014, the Pond Farm Pottery sites, the whole area that, um, that, uh, that she lived and worked, became a, a part of the National Historic Register. So it'll probably be kept for future generations, which is really neat so people can come and see where she lived and worked. So the piece we have in our collection, as I said before, is called The Horses and Children. It's actually not dated, so we don't know when she made it, but it is ceramic. It's a piece that the museum purchased actually pretty early on in 1969. And what I think is so cool about it is that she was able to almost do what I think looks like a painting, but she was able to do that right on ceramics. So many people think of ceramics as being something that you have to use, like a vase for flowers or a pot to put something in. But what she decided was that it didn't always have to be that. Sometimes it could just be something beautiful that you could put on display, but wouldn't necessarily have to use, which I think is pretty cool.